Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to another one of these times when I spectate my friends. Now, this game, we joined in like, right at the start because I just managed to sort of catch them right at the beginning of the game and watch Point Gibraltar. This game is actually from towards the end of the beta. I think this was the last day of the beta. And I picked this game out to start us off with because I spent a lot of time watching Raylan in particular playing Tracer, and I want to talk a bit about playing Tracer. Now, Raylan is more experienced than most players, but she's been learning Tracer steadily throughout the open beta, especially as I've been pushing people sort of, we need another player who can play flankers, basically. So I've been trying to get Ray used to playing Tracer and Genji in particular, but Ray's focused on Tracer instead. Now, what's interesting about this one is the, this is towards the end of the beta, and, you know, they're, they're getting to the point where they're starting to get used to various heroes, they're starting to sort of settle on what heroes they like. Oh, that bomb hurts. You've got to get cl so close. So how do you use a tracer bomb? You've got to nuzzle the hero. And especially if it's like a Lucio and a Mercy, just go and nuzzle Mercy. Mercy's not going to do anything to you. Worse, she's going to bap you with the staff, but you're going to put a bomb on her, and that's kind of an uneven trade, right? So go and do that. But this is good from Ray actually just putting damage into the Roadhog. What Ray wants to do here is, because they're all clumped up, you're just looking and waiting, and there, there's the opportunity. You go in, you get the kill, you get the pick. And then you go hunt for the next target. So the next support to go for, Lucio. Easy. He's fleeing from one target, just go into the other one. Stay the hell away from that, because that will kill you in one swing and a melee hit, basically. So don't go near that. But yeah, like that was really well done. Like You're just being patient, 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 looking for the right target. Jump on Mercy, kill her immediately, tear her apart, get the damage in the right place, and it's suddenly easy. After that, go into the back line, find Roadhog, use Roadhog to charge up your next bomb, and then you're going to go kill someone else. It's nice and straightforward and simple. But yeah, I like this game because they basically sort of got to the point where they're, they're really getting comfortable in various heroes and playing fairly well. Now the reason why uh, you can sometimes hear me talking in the background is because I'm actually in voice comms with them. So there's actually a random in there, and this is super good by Ray again. Gets into the back, the front line's distracted, find the supports. Aim it a little bit erratically there, but it doesn't matter too much. The Mercy's already dead, stay in tranquility. Okay, you've got a bomb, there's a low hit point. Roadhog, you could go dump it on him, you can go find another target. That was so close, but... ah. The Discord is so, so good for just setting Tracer up, by the way. Let's jump on to... This is the random, actually. This is the random doing a pretty good job, by the way, on Zenyada. Let's jump on Saf with May. See what May's up to. So, again, lead your shots. Like, please. That's that's all that you kind of need to do a little bit, but otherwise it's not too bad. But right here, this is where like, I'm thinking, okay, well, how are they going to win this last point? And to me, the key is this guy, Kelly. So, 76 is going to be so key for this one because they don't have a good answer to the the tactical visor. They have a Roadhog and they have two supports. That's not really going to stop uh, Curly just getting the damage where he wants. But here, Forma actually gets a really damn good Earth Shatter. Does kill the Mercy towards the end of that. My advice is always try and kill the Mercy first because if you don't, she manages to stand up and press Q. That's going to be bad for you. I mean, look at them. Look at them. They're working like a well-oiled machine. Like, Tracer's doing her job, she's getting into the back, killing supports, the the Zenyada, even though he's a random, is doing Zenyada things, he's putting discords on the appropriate targets, Former's tanking up a storm, landing Earth Shatters, killing everyone, and this is what happens when people start learning what they're doing, and start working together as well on the machine. Now that's a very short game, we're going to get into a, a game earlier on in the beta now, to sort of contrast against this, this smooth, clean attack where the payload just like never stopped running, they just slaughtered the way through it, and let's jump on board with Former as well for play of the game. And I love that animation, by the way. It's so good. But yeah, this to me, like, I like the fact that she gets the pin on Lucio and, like, knocks four people miles, and then just beautiful. Now, Fire Strike Mercy here is just, like, the only optimization, I'd say. So the moment you see them, like, all laid out like that, just put a Fire Strike on Mercy. Mercy would die, but that was a really, like, that was an Earth Shadow that I approve of. And trust me, I'm a beast on Reinhardt, and it's really good to see. But we're just going to jump ahead and go into the next game very soon. Okay, and now we're back earlier on, and as you can see from the chat, like, I've been sort of talking to them throughout this game. This was from about day four of the beta. Not even day four, I think it's like day two or three of the beta. And I've been watching them play, and yeah, it's just like... Okay, what are they doing? Where's the decision-making going wrong? And you're going to see, like, this is going to be a full game on Ilios, by the way. A full series, it goes all three maps, the full distance. So there's lots and lots of stuff to talk about as we just, like, hop on Lucio's back here. And also, this is just me talking to Saf as well about the previous game. I think this is one of the games that was in the previous series that I did watching these guys, by the way. It was just, they lost control of Mercy and Bastion, and every time that happened, they, they lost, basically. 
But let's jump on board with Ray, and this is Ray playing D.Va. Gets a book on their D.Va immediately. Doesn't unfortunately knock them. It's very difficult to knock a D.Va off anyway, so it's, you know, not too much to worry about. But otherwise, like, this, this is a strategy that I tell them to stop doing, right? And this is a strategy that I tell everyone to stop doing, by the way, is at the beginning, don't go for the point in a King of the Hill. Go for the high ground around a point. So on this map on Helios, for example, I like taking that building just right to the, uh, the bell tower that you could see. I like taking that over and then just putting a lot of damage onto the point and then you go onto the point from there. Basically what happens is a less experienced team will just swing onto the point and it leaves them really exposed to a lot of damage and a lot of places they can get hurt. So that's at least how I like to open up King of the Hills and that's sort of what I start teaching them as the game as we play more and more and more. But here Ray's doing a good job. Ray wants to sort of use D.Va to get into good position. Now this is terrible. Don't do this. So what happened here was there was no coordination and by the way this this is... 10 out of 10 play Bastion, play of the game. No, okay, so what, like, let me digest that play while the rest of this plays out. So what Ray did was Ray jumped from like the top and went down in front of Bastion and put a defense matrix up. Now Bastion, he's just gonna go, okay, and then the defense matrix is gonna go down, he's gonna put a million bullets into Ray's face and blow up the mech immediately, or he's gonna go into tank mode and jump off a cliff, as ba sometimes Bastion is wont to do. But don't do that. Just start shooting him. If you've gone down in front of him, just start shooting him. There was no one there on the team sort of ready to act upon that. Ray just sort of, and I talked to Ray about this afterwards, by the way. Ray said that she expected people to sort of go and kill the Bastion, basically. But no one else was going to do that. Just get into his back and just start shooting. Because what that will do is exactly the same thing that Defense Matrix is going to do, right? It's going to force him to turn around and start shooting at you, which means he's not shooting anyway at anyone else and then you can get a lot of damage onto him and he might kill the mech, he might be able to do it but he's probably gonna lose a lot of health in the process luckily Ray gets back into the mech here as well and, ooh, free booping got him, got him lovely, lovely, this is what I love doing with D.Va by the way on this map is just sharking around that outside area you just keep driving around there and just keep knocking people off yeah, yeah that was really good and also, hey, D.Va jumped out and landed in a trap lovely, absolutely lovely but what they're doing here is, this is where like you need someone like a, like me basically. Like This is actually a better approach by the way. Like Notice that Bastion had to turn around to deal with that and got taken out in the meantime by Dale Han on Junkrat. So now they've got control of the Bastion, now they can just clean up the rest with, within their own time kind of safely. Although it's just sapping right on the point at the moment I think. It's unfortunate there's a soldier ult, not too big a problem. If the soldier stays out there, it's an easy boop as well, so go and look for that. Like if I was Ray, I'd be looking for people to boop. I wouldn't try and boop the Farah, because Farah can fly. So that kind of makes it hard. And there's also, yeah, there's a health pack just behind Ray. I was thinking of typing help, but like, that's not too useful, and I think Ray picked it up anyway. So always keep in mind that if you're finding around a health pack, it's going to be very useful. Um, this is why I say like learn the health packs, learn where they are, because it's just super useful knowledge to make you stronger, basically. And here, these two guys, the Lucio and the, the Roadhog, should be hunting down this Bastion. Bastion's not a big threat here, because Roadhog can do that. So just kill him. Simple. Really, really simple. Heal up and get ready to fight the Farah. Good stuff. But this is, this is sort of what I like to see. So what new players don't do quite often is they don't think about what they're doing which kind of makes sense because they're new they're sort of panicking a bit they might be a bit flustered of well what do i do what do i do there's sort of no surety in what they're doing this is why you'll hear me say things like uh, mini objectives a lot by the way because that's sort of just how i think and how i digest how i play is i set objectives for myself i set things to do and oh curly knocking a lucio off beautiful beautiful this is why sort of knockback is so good on these maps especially ilios Oh, just needed to leave the target a little bit more. Again, this is very early on the beta. They do get better about stuff like that and sort of predicting where people are going to go. If you stun Farah or freeze Farah, she will drop out of the sky. So just be ready for that. <laughs> oh, beautiful. As I said in the chat, brutal, savage, wrecked. Lovely. And there's the Bastion. Get into him. Unfortunately, he has a Lucio barrier on him, but by the time you reacted, he was already dead. Lovely. Like, that's perfect, that's perfect. Just get into his flank and just put damage into him. And, oh yeah, by the way, shoot the blue thing on Bastion. It's his head. It will kill him a lot faster. If you're slamming damage directly into that, it's going to do a lot more hurt and remove him faster. Very simple. But yeah, I was talking about objectives. I'm like, this is sort of how I play. And I said objectives for each hero, and I should do a video where I just tell you what sort of objectives I have in mind when I'm playing each specific hero. And yes, yeah, me saying like, kill Mercy, kill Mercy, kill Mercy. Mercy's gonna res everyone, be ready to bomb. Oh wait, you've already won. Okay, fine. 
So yeah, mini objectives, like with Diva for example, my mini objective is to go find their supports and put damage into that, is to find their tanks and make sure their tanks are taking a huge amount of damage any time they're trying to do something, it's to be mobile, it's to find things to knock off. Uh, let's say Tracer, my objective is to find the supports, it's to put bombs on key targets at key times. As McCree, it's to find their tanks and shut down their tanks, it's to shut down their flankers and protect their supports. It's, it's stuff like that, it's just having like a general idea of, I should be doing this at this time, and that will come with time. But I think I could probably make a shortcut for you guys by just telling you. And here I'm spectating Widowmaker because I'm a child and I don't repent at all. I'm just, I'm going to watch Widowmaker in third person for a while. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it as well. But, yeah. Uh, also, by the way, yeah, anyone, like, as you can see me typing in chat as we're still spectating Widowmaker, there's a reason why I like Widowmaker, guys. Anyone saying that Widowmaker's butt has been shrunk at any point during development is crazy. They're on the crazy pills. But anyway, let's get back to focusing on the game rather than just watching Widowmaker all day. I'm sure I can do a video on that and people will love it, but let's talk about the game a little bit. This is better from Ray, by the way, just getting into position, putting damage down, but when you get out of the mech, then you've got to run. You can't try and fight Bastion. Like, Bastion will win against the Diva every time when she's outside of a mech. So what's happening here is they're sort of they're clumped up in the back and they've got the Bastion and Mercy ready. And now people are just kind of trickling in, and this is sort of why we say, you know, oh, don't trickle in, don't trickle in. And here, like, Ironia runs out and tries to get damage to Mercy, but Bastion's right there, so there's bad target priority. And again, I'll make the caveat that this is early in the beta. This is actually, like, I'm looking at the date that's recorded, so this was on the 4th. So this is, like, the second day of them playing, so I'm not going to expect wonders from them. They did improve at this over time. But it's stuff like, you know, when you look at it, sort of step back and look at it, like running out and killing the Mercy is not going to be useful when there's a Bastion there shooting at you, right? You can sort of instantly predict what's going to happen. But you'll find this with new players a lot where they don't sort of stop and think about, oh, well, there's a Bastion there, so I should probably put damage on him. Like there's this thing of, oh, there's a support, I should be killing that, but oh, wait, there's a Bastion there. Now, luckily, Ray dropped a bomb, cleared out the point. Now, what needs to happen is, like, Saf should get on the point now. But unfortunately, I think Mercy rezzed everyone as well. So there was sort of this drop of pressure almost where Ray got two kills, but people weren't watching the kill feed enough to know to capitalize on the back of that. So Mercy just picked everyone up and then they lost all pressure. And this is why I talk about pressure a lot. It's the ability to just sustain and put damage out and put damage out consistently and capitalize on mistakes. When you lose pressure, it suddenly becomes very hard. You know, I'm telling Dale, okay, well, you got a dead eye. Trying, like I didn't, I think when I said that I didn't notice, but oh, Form was gone, Junkrat. So that's great, because Form actually like started playing a lot of Junkrat. And he like down goes Junkrat as well, just because I've told him to. But no, 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 Form has gone Junkrat, so you didn't have to. But like, because they're all on the point, this is where I sort of sit back and think, okay, well, what's going to shift them off the point? Indirect damage is going to shift them off the point. So Zarya and Junkrat especially will be super useful here, because you can just spam down onto the point and kill everyone. Like here, like... Curly's ulting, but there's Bastion, and this is sort of why I say like target priority on Bastion is number one because it doesn't matter who the angry grill is hitting if Bastion's just there plugging away at people. And when you sit back and spectate new people, you'll see this a lot, a huge amount, an absolutely huge amount, and people don't think they're doing it because they they don't have kind of a stock of the game around them, but. It's so fascinating when you actually sit back and watch people play and you go, why aren't you focusing this? And they go, well, so-and-so was shooting me and so-and-so was doing something, but it's like, no, but this is the more important target. And that's just, it takes experience and it takes calm. And I think calm is, you know, calm is linked to experience, right? You just, you've seen enough fights to know, okay, well, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, I need to do this. But we're going to be on the final map here. It's all on this, all or nothing, right now, on this map, on the well, on Ilios, the Pit of Death. They've got a team built for the Pit of Death, by the way. So Junkrat's very good at it, Diva's very good at it, Winston's very good at it, Lucia's very good at it. I think Aronia... No, wait, it's Saf who actually actively really hunts for this kind of stuff. But again, this sort of thing I like, taking the area around the point. You don't want to stand on the point because it's super exposed. And this is actually really nice trap placement. I like just putting traps willy-nilly. Almost gets the finish with the bomb. This is one thing that this is like a skill that you will learn with time is using the conk mine to get reliable damage. Hello, Lucia, you're dead. Hello, Diva, you're dead. Not looking good at the moment, but they actually managed to take it, so they got a lot more kills. Now, this Mercy Farah is a problem because if you look at the team comp that they're running, I believe it has no great answer. I think the only answer is Dale on uh, McCree, and McCree isn't the greatest against Farah. He's not bad. Oh, that's a really good hook, unfortunately. 
it was a hook on the own and just yeah junk uh, roadhog's just a big squishy target so he just goes down instantly and they still got control of the point here like jumping onto the diva but there's a mercy healing him winston can't out damage mercy healing he can kill the mercy he can kill the mercy amazingly so it's, it's stuff like that you know why are you jumping on diva when there's mercy and you can see the mercy beam so you know where she is they just go for the mercy instead. Kill the mercy here. The bomb goes off. Just running away. Good stuff. And Ray, just because we didn't have a stupid junk rat, and I think Ray, no, Ray means Roadhog. Ray for a while just doesn't like Roadhog, but I'm actually warming up to Roadhog. And like I say in chat, he's fine. He's actually really good on this map. It's just that the team is sort of not cohesive even though they're playing in a six they're sort of just all doing different things and it's because they don't have that experience at this point to where they have they know exactly what each other need to be doing and this is why i say things like you know uh, i answered a question yesterday in the questions video of you know um how do i work as a team when i don't have voice comm and i go on to explain that you know when people are new they don't have any idea what they're doing so they're sort of they don't expect they don't know what they should kind of be looking for like here there was a mercy right there although <laughs> that was amazing by the way so if you haven't done this before as Junkrat she tried to detonate the bomb but because the bomb died she just fired off a grenade and so what happens is Farah comes in and she just fires off the grenade when she's trying to detonate the bomb and hits Farah it's like <laughs> just perfect absolutely perfect I was like I don't know, the, the number of things that went wrong that suddenly went right. But yeah, in that case, just detonate the bomb on the Mercy. Killing Mercy is fine with that bomb, and trying to chase Bastion too far means the bomb's going to go down. Again, it's one of those things you pick up with experience. You get used to, oh, the bomb's going to die if I run into a team of people. It's just one of those things that you kind of... It sounds really simple and sensible when you sort of sit back and say it, but when you're playing, you might not realise, oh, yeah, I know, I really overextended with that bomb. Yeah, good use of Conk Mine. Fortunately, it just hits the D.Va, but like that's how I use Conk Mine. I just use it for the reliable damage, just throw it out, and it's like 120 damage or something. It's insane how hard it hits. It's so good for finishing targets off, so I love using it for that kind of thing. Bastion's just ulted, but he's shooting D.Va, which is fine. It means that like a lot of that ult just got wasted. Put bombs on him, put pressure on him. There's the fire in the hole. Good, get behind a wall. Now you're looking for Bastion. There's Bastion. Just blow him up. Ace. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Bastion's gone. All the threats gone. Kill feed is definitely in your favor. There's just a Farah that no one can really deal with except for Dale. So let's jump ball with Dale. Good. Good. Spectating by me. Let's see what he can do with this McCree. Now Dale is someone who sort of... He got a lot better as the game went by. His aiming was a little bit off early on, but it just got more and more reliable. Also, like McCree's left click is a little bit finicky to use. It's like, it's one of those things that if you're not used to FPS aiming, it's really goddamn difficult. Yeah, Ray. Good use of defense matrix gets people in position. Bastion went somewhere. No idea where Bastion's gone there. He got knocked around, hooked. Not. No idea where he went. And this is me saying like, oh, Bastion just rezzed. So what I noticed during that fight, for example, this is where like my awareness sort of shines, is because I saw that Bastion died, then Mercy rez, then died. So Bastion is just rez. So my mind is instantly gone. Okay, you've got to kill Bastion again, because if he sets up behind you all, he's just going to kill everyone. Luckily, uh, Eronia on the Lucio actually went and killed him, so good stuff there. But yeah, like, Ray just focused on the wrong target. I think Ray was chasing a Farah around, and D.Va chasing Farah isn't useful here. Good, 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 good. Would have been nice to see a hook come out towards the end of that, just to get him out of uh, tank form. Just because Defense Matrix only lasts about two seconds, and it wasn't guaranteed that you're going to get the kill there. Shooting three shots into the Defense Matrix, don't do that. Hook, unfortunately, was down, but Ray managed to catch you a little bit. And also, really good use of Sound Barrier, by the way. So, if someone's firing off an ultimate, firing Sound Barrier is pretty much always going to be a good idea. As long as, you know, it's an offensive ultimate. Like, if you hear Genji pull out his Dragon Blade, I can tell you, as someone who plays a lot of Genji, the most annoying thing to have happen is to some for someone to fire a Sound Barrier, because it makes my ult completely goddamn useless. I can't get any kills, and therefore I can't snowball, and I can't really just murder the entire team as Genji, which is what I want to do. So, my ultimate becomes redundant. It's a really good use of Sound Barrier. It also means that your team can get a lot done. Here's just a diva buying overtime, but she's going to go down nice and quickly, I think. And here comes a bomb as well, just to knock it out. Ray spinning around for no real reason does manage to find the diva eventually. Take him out. Good stuff. And they have managed to do it and hold it. Now, what I want to draw attention to, and also as this game plays out, what I'll do is I'll put 
uh, me playing Reinhardt against these guys, just as I sort of finish up and wrap up what points I want to make. Play. Hopefully you can see, between the first game, they all kind of knew what their role was and who they should be fighting and what they should be doing. And it took them a week to learn that. Now, admittedly, they have me sort of over their shoulder telling them, and Bray and Saf to some degree as well, because I can't sort of completely marginalize their game knowledge. They do have game knowledge that's just a bit rusty, I guess. Telling them how to do what they need to do, like, and figuring out, okay, I'm playing Soldier 76, so I should be doing this. I'm playing Tracer in Ray's case, I should be killing the Mercy over and over and over again, because that's my job, and then I build up on Roadhog, and then I go from there. Like, this, they knew how to play their role, and how to play the hero to that role on the team. Whereas with this game on Ilios, even though they won, they were just all over the place. They didn't know who to focus, who to kill, what to do at any given moment. It was just a mess. And this is what I mean when I say that, you know, how do I play as a team? When people start clicking into their roles and knowing, okay, when I play Zenyatta, I need to be orbing these people in particular, staying at the back and doing this and this and this at this moment. When I'm playing Lucio, I need to be doing this. When I'm playing Genji, I need to be doing this. And when that starts clicking into place, it becomes very easy to sort of slot yourself into that well-oiled well machine and the game becomes smoother as a whole. Now for you guys, if you're playing solo and on your own and you're playing, doing that a lot, you'll find it takes a while to happen. It'll probably take about a month, maybe two months for people to really start figuring out where the hero is best. But with my help, you guys will know it in a couple of weeks. And if you've watched, been watching my videos, you probably know a lot of this stuff already. Thankfully. But yeah, thanks for watching to the end. I have been Josh as one voice amongst many. I will do more of this kind of stuff when I get the chance. Hopefully they'll have like a, a way to spectate your friends easier when the game comes out. I really hope they do. If not, I'll try and get more of this kind of footage because I love doing it. I love talking over it. Um, if it's possible, I might... I'm tempted to say that I'd... I'm tempted to say that I'd look into a way for doing it for like... I don't know, people to send in clips. The only problem is getting the clips because there is no sort of defined replay system. So, you know, doing like VOD review for people is a little bit difficult. What you'd have to do is if you've got recorded footage, upload it to YouTube as just a video on YouTube and then link that. But I'd say hold off on that for now, although there's a week still before the game comes out. So maybe if you have a VOD of you playing, and it's decent quality, I'll look into it, I guess. And if I sound really unsure, it's just because I'm thinking how I'm going to do this. And also it means I need to keep an eye on the comments because links in the comments tend to get picked up by the spam filter. So I'll try and keep an eye on that. But yeah, if you guys have VODs, I'll take a look at a couple of them, I guess, and maybe do a video on that just until the beta sort of comes back. But I'll definitely be doing this uh, more and more just on my end when the beta comes up and try and spectate people who are playing the game and then talk about what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, at least in my view. And, I don't know, backseat gaming, coaching, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, thanks for watching the end. I've been Josh, is one voice amongst many. Toodles. of the game.